Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Avron Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Karua Dart. This board features Karua's float camber, which is rocker in the nose, and then camber from outside the front foot all the way back to the tail. This is gonna give you the load and pop of traditional camber, but better float in pow, as well as ease of entry in and out of turns. This board is available in 140, 152, 156, 160, and 164. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a day that was a mix of gray skies and blue. It was kind of just windy, blowing through with a little bit of snow falling at times. It was colder temps. There was a little bit of fresh snow on top of perfect corduroy, as well as a little bit more snow off the trail. And there was some chunder and lumpy ass crappy snow depending where I went, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. The overall flex of this board comes in at just past a middle of the road free ride carving cruiser flex. The softest section of the board is gonna be the nose where the rocker is, but right where it meets the camber, it becomes a uniform flex from the start of the camber zone all the way back through the tail with a little bit of torsional flex, but not a crazy amount that really lets you overpower it. Now, this board is super stable. You really don't feel any micro vibrations, even with that rocker out the nose. It never really resonates back underfoot. It completely dissipates. And when you get into rutted out terrain, this more or less just crushes through everything or gets you up on top of it with ease. So with the camera profile and the width of this board, you do end up with a very stable ride. This board does have pop. And with that flatter tail, right where the camber zone comes down, you get a springboard effect, it snaps. You don't feel like you have to load this board up aggressively to get it to pop. It's more or less you're riding along and suddenly you just want to spring, you're in the air, it gets the job done. It's just a very easy board to actually engage the pop with. It's not the snappiest, craziest thing I've been on, but you will be pleasantly surprised with it. Yeah, I, I didn't butter with this thing. I kept it completely directional when I rode it. It was just go straight and turn. I'm not saying you can't butter with it. I mean, it's got rocker in the nose. I'm saying I didn't even bother trying. This board is quick and nimble edge to edge. You notice that you engage the turn right outside the front foot. And then as you get it on edge, you steer it directly under foot. It's very similar in how a K2 Cool Bean rides. You just notice that it rolls up on edge and it transitions very smoothly. Then you transition it back over on your heel. And once again, it's a smooth arc of a turn. When you really want to press this board through and drive it into a carve, you disengage from the front and let it steer from the middle back and you can really lay it over. I will say that one thing I noticed was that about one out of every 50 hard turns like that, it would get a little loopy and kind of disengage and wash out a little bit right inside that front foot. It was something that the conditions just had to be right and it had to be just how I was pressuring it on the edge that I would notice it. Otherwise, never really had any problem with it. You feel locked in and this board is great from swooping from one side of the run back to the other. If you really like carving, this is a solid investment for yourself. You can really transition it smoothly. And when you want to rip a Euro car, if you can, if you're doing short, tight, quick turns, you don't have to worry about it. It just does what you need it to do when you get it on edge. It's very smooth and stable. You never really feel any vibrations, even with that rocker out in the nose. And it just sort of plows through everything in its path. So who's this board for? The free ride carving cruiser guy that is all directional all the time. Like I already said, getting on this board feels like riding a brand new K2 Cool Bean. It's damp, smooth, and stable, and it transitions smoothly on edge. This is a board for ripping carves at high speeds or slow speeds. It doesn't really matter. It wants to turn. It wants to stay on edge. I will say that getting in tight trees, because Colorado has really tight trees, this was a little questionable. I thought I was going to die a few times. That's wouldn't be my first choice for riding tight trees and really rutted out terrain where you're going up and over moguls and bumps and transitioning from toe to heel relatively quickly as you try to make your way through the woods. It's not what it's for. In wide open pow, no problem. The tail sinks, the nose floats. You don't have any issues with it. I wish we'd had more snow, but that's just the case of this year. We don't really have much. Otherwise, super solid board, 
really overly impressed with it. Comparable boards, the K2 Cool Bean, the Jones Storm Wolf, the Nidecker Tracer. This has been my review of the Karua Dart. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really want to support us and just help us grow out what we're doing over here, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.